In part one of our video on creating rounds in Creo Parametric, we covered a number of different topics, including creating sets, the different kinds of references that you can select, and also different radius methods like full round and through curve and chordal. In this video, we're going to cover two different topics. We're going to cover the creation method, rolling ball versus normal to spine, and also the different kinds of profiles that you have the default circular, also conic and D1 by D2 conic, and curvature continuous and D1 by D2 curvature continuous. Before we do that though, let me orient you to my model. I'm gonna cancel out of this round feature. This part is a, uh, consists of a sketch, which is a straight line. And then I use that straight line in order to create a sweep and the sweep has a circular cross section. So essentially it's creating a tube. And then I mirrored that sweep about a plane so that it intersects itself. And I'm going to use this to demonstrate the two different creation methods. Let's start off by creating a round on this edge. I will select the edge. And then from the mini toolbar, I can click on the round command. And you can see from the tooltip that it is the keyboard shortcut of the letter R. And when I click on that, here you can see a preview of the geometry. Let me collapse my model tree and then go to the sets tab. And here we have the default creation method of rolling ball. And the way that this method works is that it Re, it uses a spherical ball of the specified radius and tries to keep it, and, and it creates it by moving that spherical ball along the reference, meaning maintaining tangency to the necessary references. And so here you can see how the geometry is created. And in this particular case, you can see how it's starting to neck here in the middle. Let's try changing this. Let's increase this to a value of 12. And it starts to get more pronounced how it's necking in the middle. And let's do one more change. Let's increase this up to 16. And again, it's getting worse and worse as it's going on because it's trying to use that rolling ball method. Now with that round in the feature, let's select another edge. And as we saw in the first video, when you select another edge, it becomes a different set. I'm going to change this second set down to the initial value of 8. And I'm going to change the creation method from rolling ball to normal to spine. And with normal to spine, you'll notice when I change that, it adjusted the shape. Because now it's using a sweep in which it uses the reference as the spine of the sweep that you are creating. And so this ends up creating a little better geometry in this particular situation. So if you're not getting the geometry that you want, you might want to change the creation method. And you'll notice again, as I increase it, we're not getting that necking there in the middle. And again, I'll change it one more time to a value of 16. And so in that way, we're getting the round between those different references that isn't having the same necking effect that we have with the default method of rolling ball. That's good. Let me hit the check mark. And that way I have my round feature created in this particular part. One other thing to show you about this round feature is that we also have the method of using a chordal round or a constant width round. So I'm going to select the round and then edit definition. I'm going to first start off by increasing this down to a value of 4. Actually, let's increase this to 8. There we go. And for the chordal round, if I go to the sets tab, here we can choose chordal. And now it's going to end up using a constant width round. Let's adjust this back down. Now let's try value of, there we go. Now we have the constant width. The value of eight was just too large and ended up swallowing up too much of the geometry. But here we see that we have that constant width round instead. Let's hit the check mark. And that's good for this part. For the different profiles, let's take a look at creating a new part. And I'm just going to click on the new icon. I'm going to call this round profiles 
and click the OK button. I'm going to use my default template. Let me turn on my datum plane visibility real quick. I'm going to start off by creating a sketch on the datum plane front so I can select the datum plane and then click on the sketch tool from the mini toolbar. In the tooltip, you can see that this is the keyboard shortcut of S. And let me go to my sketch view. I no longer need to see my datum planes. Let's turn off their display. And I'm going to use the palette to grab a shape. Let me go to the profiles tab and then grab the C shape and just drop it in here. Let me close out of here. I'm going to grab the rotation drag handle and I'm going to decrease the scale a bit. Let's reduce this down to a value of 10. And for moving this into place, I want to change the drag location. Instead of using the geometric center of the sketch, I'm going to right click on here and drag to the middle there. And then now I'm using a left drag to position this exactly where I want it to be. That's good. Let's hit the check mark and the sketch is placed in here. Let me hold down the right mouse button and from the toolbar, I can choose the check mark to exit out of sketch mode. And I'm just going to now extrude this, which is the keyboard shortcut of X that you can see from the mini toolbar. And I don't need it quite so big. Let's change this to a value of 20. So that's good. I just wanted to create some geometry and just remind you that you can use the palette in order to create geometry and show you how you could use the different tools within the palette command in order to place the sketch. Just make this look a little nicer. I'm going to change the color. Let me go to the view tab and then appearances and scroll down in here until I find one of my colors that I like. There we go. And then select the top node in the model tree. And that way I change the color of the part. Great. Now let's create some round features in here. Let's click on the round tool and I'm going to select a bunch of edges. I want to select all the edges. If I tap the right mouse button, I could get the intent edges, which will grab all the edges associated with that extrude feature. But I don't want all of those. I just want a few of them on here. Let's grab this one. And now to select some additional references, I'm going to hold down the control key. One second, I have a cat here who's fighting my mouse and hold down the control key and grab a couple of the other different edges in here. And so this is good. I'm starting off with a radius value of four. That is good in here. Let me hit the check mark to finish off this round. And I'm going to go to the analysis tab to display some curvature. Here I have the curvature command. I'm going to use the drop down list. Instead of using shaded curvature or Gaussian curvature, I'm just going to use a standard curvature analysis. And a lot of people call this the porcupine plot. I'm going to hold down the control key to grab a bunch of the different edges on here. And I like the scale that's giving me a default scale of two. If you wanted to, you could increase that scale if you wanted to increase the height of the porcupines. But value of two is good. And for the quality, it's pretty high right now. Maybe I'm going to decrease this down so I can not see a big blur of gray in there. Yeah, about so. That's good. So with this curvature plot, what it's displaying is 1 over the radius at every point along here. And from this drop-down list, instead of using the default quick, I'm going to use saved and then click the OK button. And that way, I'm getting what's called persistent display. I'm getting the display of the curvature on the screen. And I'm going to use this to show you the difference between the different profiles in the round feature. So curvature is defined as 1 over the radi radius at every point along an edge or a surface. And for a flat surface like we have over here or a straight edge, that radius is infinite, so 1 over infinity is 0. So we have no curvature here. In this particular area, I did a radius of 4. Therefore, the value of the curvature is 0.25, 1 over 4. And the same with the other edges associated with the round feature. And the reason why you might want to change the profile is that we have such an abrupt change in the curvature 
of the edges over here. It goes from zero, all of a sudden jumps up to a value and then maintains constant value and drops back down. And sometimes for different applications, you want to change the shape of the round and also change how it enters and exits from flat into the curved shape. To do that, let's go back. I'm going to use the model tab. Let's select the round feature and then edit definition. And if I go to the sets tab on here, from the top drop down list, we have the different profiles available to us. And the default is circular. In other words, it's going to use a round shape in order to create it. But instead of circular, we can change this to conic. And when I change this to conic, I want you to notice that in the graphics area, I'm going to get an additional dimension. So here we have this dimension here of 0.5. You can see the 0.5 value in this drop down list as well. And you can see that we have previous different values that were entered. And this value is a conic parameter called rho. And rho basically measures a ratio of different lengths when you draw some asymptotes out from the shape of the conic. But the value of rho is what's really important. And when you have a value of 0.5, you're going to get a parabolic shape to the round. I'm going to hit the check mark. And you can notice that the porcupines that we have here for the curvature changed a little bit. So we can see that one over the radius is now changing because we're using a parabolic shape for the round instead of that default circular shape. Let's edit definition again and go back to the sets tab. So again, we're using a conic shape with a row value of 0.5, which gives us a parabolic shape. If you use a value greater than 0.5, you're going to get a hyperbolic shape. Let me change this to a value of 0.7. And you might have noticed that it got sort of like a little pointier over here. And unfortunately, the Persistent display does not update until I complete the feature. So let's hit the check mark. And so now you can see how those porcupines adjust. So again, we had this really abrupt change in the value of the curvature, but you see that it's not so abrupt by using the conic shape with a higher value. But then in the middle, the curvature really jumps and then it comes back down. All right, let's do that again. Let's edit definition and even try a higher value for that row value. Let's change this to 0.85. And by the way, mathematically, about the highest value that you can get for row is about 0.95. And so there you can see, again, we're getting really, really sharp changes in curvatures as we get out towards the middle of it. Let's edit definition and go back and by the way instead of changing it from the sets tab you can also change it from here in the dashboard or in the graphics area so if you have a value less than 0.5 then you're going to get an elliptical shape so for example let me change this to 0.25 and you'll notice that it ends up a little flatter in here let me hit the check mark to complete that one and you can see now with using this low value of rho, we're getting a much more abrupt change in the curvature as the round begins, but it's lower curvature towards the middle of it. So there you can see, you can, as you're playing around with that row parameter, the different changes in the value that you're getting. And there's one other value that I'm going to change this to. If you use a value of the square root of 2 minus 1, which is approximately equal to 0.4142, you're going to get a shape that's called the quadrant of the ellipse. And in this particular one, since I'm using a constant radius value, that would actually give me a circular shape. So again, that value is 0.4142 approximately. If you want the exact value, you can type in SQRT, which is the square root function, and then 2 minus 1 and hit enter. And right now it asks me, do I want to add this as a relation? No, I just wanted to evaluate it and put it in there. Let's hit yes in here. And you can see again out to a bunch of different decimal places, 0.414213, blah, blah, blah. Let's hit the check mark in there. And so now if you take a look at those porcupines, it looks like the value, the shape that I had when I used the default circular shape. All right, that's good. Let's edit definition. So there we saw what happens when you use a value of 
uh, 0.4142. Oh, it looks like I accidentally added a relation in here. Let me hit the check mark and get out of here and then go to the model intent drop down and then go to relations. Nope, there's no relation in here. Uh, let's cancel out of there. Actually, let's change to feature and then no. Let's change to feature. Yeah, I accidentally put a relation in there. So let's get rid of this relation. That's why the value of row was grayed out. Let's click the OK button. Go back to edit definition over here. And now I can change that row value. And let's change it back to 0.5 for a parabolic shape. But before I hit the check mark this time, I'm going to go to the sets tab and change this from a conic shape to a D1 by D2 conic. What this means is instead of being a value four along both of the references, you can change it to have different lengths along the side references. So again, D1 by D2, let's select that. You'll notice now I have an additional value in here. I can also use these drag handles if I want it to be higher over here. So maybe I want to change that to a value of eight over there and then change this. Let's make this smaller. Let's make this a value of two and then hit the check mark. And so that way we are getting a conic shape that goes different distances back along the references that define the edge for the round. Let's edit definition once more. And from the sets tab, let me change this from D1 by D2. Oh, actually, I chose D1 by D2 curvature continuous instead of D1 by D2 conic. Let's change this one to value of two just to show you that one and hit the check mark. Just want to show you how the porcupines adjust. So again, you can see that by using D1 by D2 conic, we have this big jump in the change of curvature at the different references. Let's go back to curvature continuity. I'm going to edit definition and then from the sets tab from the drop down list I'm going to choose C2 continuous and C2 means curvature continuity. Typically, typically you'll see C0, C1, C2, C3 and so on when you are referring to curves and when you're re referring to surfaces you'll see G0, G1, G2, G3 and so forth. And so when you have G0 continuity or C0 continuity you have either surfaces or edges that are connected but they've got no shared boundary conditions. When you have C1 or G1, then you have tangency. If you have C2 or G2, you have curvature continuity and C3 and C4 are referred to as acceleration. They're essentially the derivatives of each other. But let's change this to C2 continuous. And we're using a value of eight over here. We're using a row parameter of 0.5. Let's hit the check mark. And there you can see how the porcupines adjust. So again, it, with having this continuity, instead of having this abrupt change in the curvature, you'll notice that straight and then it, it adjusts out over here. So that way you get more aesthetically pleasing surfaces typically a lot of times you'll hear these referred to as class a surfaces in the automotive industry when you have that curvature continuity again let's edit definition i'm just going to change the row value a couple of times let's change this row value or as they call it here the c2 shape factor use a value of 0.7 so it gets more hyperbolic and hit the check mark there again, you can see the effect on the porcupines and edit definition once more and change this C2 shape factor to a value of, let's say, 0.25. And again, you can see how it changes in the middle and how the porcupines change. All right, let's edit definition. And I inadvertently showed you D1 by D2 C2 curvature continuous before but let's show that again d1 by d2 curvature continuous let's change the shape value to 0.5 and right now we're using the same value along both the edges let's change one of these to a value of 2 so it ends up getting a little shallower and then hit the check mark now you can see how the porcupines adjust 
for the change in the curvature. So again, it's keeping it more, a little more continuous, although we do have a big jump. It seems like a big jump, but it's not distinct like it was when we had the default conical shape. So in that way, in the round feature, you can control the shape with these different profiles. Again, you have circular, conic, D1 by D2 conic, curvature continuous, and D1 by D2 curvature continuous with the ability to have different radius values along the references that define the edge that you're placing the round on. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.